Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from Europe. I hope everybody is having a good weekend so far, staying strong, staying healthy and being productive. Welcome everyone. Welcome new members. This is a members chat class. Of course, everybody is welcome to watch. It's a good idea to watch because the information from this class will be useful for the next one coming up in 90 minutes. This class is speaking part two, the cue card, the long response in the IELTS speaking section. And of course, speaking part three is connected to part two and we will be covering speaking part three in the next class in about 90 minutes where everybody can join in on the chat. So uh, welcome members. Hi, Jainil. Hi, Carolina. Hi, Hassan. Um, again, just a reminder, uh, these classes are presented to you by aehelp.com. That's academicenglishhelp.com. This is a speaking class, so make sure to speak and repeat what you hear, what you hear me say, uh, questions and answers. So don't just repeat answers, repeat questions as well. It's really good practice. And then for those students studying for the general IELTS, make sure to check us out at gieltshelp.com. That's generalieltshelp.com. Uh, these websites of ours, they're world leaders in online IELTS preparation. And you can even practice your speaking there for those students who haven't uh, checked these websites out yet. I'll quickly show you those since these are speaking classes. So just uh, bear with me a moment here. Members, this is our academic website here with the blue background. Uh, once you are a member, you can go to your My Student account. And then when you're in your My Student account, you have access to videos, interactive courses, original practice exams, and this function here, the student partner speaking. Uh, the student partner speaking, when you click on that, you access another page. And then um, you will find some users usually on this uh, page here. Uh, and then here you can connect with those users. So you just click on them and then uh, ask them to join up for speaking. Make sure to keep the page open. If you don't see any users online, like right now there's no one here, just wait a few minutes and then someone will come in to the speaking. If you cannot connect for some reason, just wait. Just be patient and wait for another user. Uh, there are restrictions on chat programs internationally, unfortunately, so you have to be patient. Okay. All right, uh, for our general IELTS website, it looks like this with the green background, same idea. You can click that big red button to join, and then uh, you'll get a My Student account, and you can use the speaking practice for free. Okay, it's absolutely free to use. All right, let's get into it, members. Um, so, uh, speaking part two, we have an original cue card question uh, for you today. Okay, uh, Carolina says, I've used it. It's great. Thank you. You're very welcome, Carolina. Yeah, keep using it. We're always working on it, updating it. Um, it's quite complex. Chat programs, as you can imagine, are very complicated pieces of software. Uh, so, uh, but definitely keep checking back. Uh, Hassan is asking a question too. Hassan is asking in speaking, they assess our context or ability to communicate effectively. Yes, absolutely, Hassan. Yeah, the speaking is not just a language. Uh, exam which measures your vocabulary uh, or your grammatical range. Okay, so uh, it's in the uh, marking criteria, Hassan. So uh, remember, students, that um, you're marked basically in four categories, and um, it's quite actually quite complex the marking scheme for the reading, uh, or sorry, for the speaking and for the uh, writing. Um, they work really hard to try to make it as fair and valid and reliable as possible. So, Hassan, for your speaking marks, uh, there are four criteria, four groups, um, and they're called, number one, 
uh, fluency and coherence. Number two, uh, grammatical range and accuracy. Number three, lexical resource. And number four, pronunciation. And um, the one that, um, pronunciation. Um, and the one that uh, really makes up most of your mark, Hassan, uh, is your fluency and coherence, okay? And if I had to say which one is the most important of all, it's coherence, okay? Coherence means how clear, detailed, and accurate your answers. Okay, so this is how clear, detailed, and accurate your answers. It's basically, Hassan, your communication. Okay, which of course includes context. Uh, grammatical range feeds into coherence. Fluency feeds into coherence. Grammatical accuracy feeds into coherence. Lexical resource feeds into coherence. Pronunciation feeds into coherence. So uh, there's a, an idiom in English, and I think in several other languages as well, all roads lead to Rome. Has everybody heard that before? All roads lead to Rome. Okay. Uh, this basically means that um, no matter what you do, at the end of the day, you're being assessed on your communication. Especially, Hassan, it's a very good question um, because remember that in the speaking, okay, band six equals fluent English. Okay, so when a student gets a band six for their speaking, it basically means they can hold a conversation so they can keep talking and they don't get stuck thinking for words or thinking for grammar, so they can just talk, 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 okay? So if you keep that in mind, Hassan, then basically anything over band eight, so any score over band six, sorry, is looking more at your communicative ability than your English, okay? So this is especially important for students who want those band sevens, eights, nines, that want those fast track visas, or you're applying for master's degrees, doctorates, and so on. And it makes sense, right? In a master's program, you can't just fluently speak English, but you have to be a good communicator, otherwise you will have problems. So um, any score that's above band six, they're assessing more your communication than your actual English skills. Does that make sense? So is that sensible, right? Um, band six is what most people need for a basic immigration visa, which makes sense because you don't have to be a great communicator to function in a Canadian or Australian society. You can work on that and improve that when you're already living in the country. All you have to be is just a fluent user of the English language, which is a band six, right? Okay, now, uh, Mahil, oh, oh yeah, 91, thank you for joining, I saw that, okay, Carolina said 6.5 for immigration, a little bit more than being fluent, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, Carolina, it depends for some people, even a 5.5, but, yeah, um, the scores are always going up, when I started teaching IELTS, believe it or not, Carolina, I think it was 5 for about 10 years ago for immigration, but it's going up, expectations are always going up. So, um, yeah, so Mahil, oh yeah, thanks for joining. Uh, Mahil, make sure to send me an email so I can hook you up with your perks, okay? And uh, communicate in the class, so don't be shy. Uh, be active. Um, I'm going to definitely try to catch your comments as well, and send me an email to adrian 
at aehelp.com so I can uh, hook you up with your uh, perks for your level of membership, okay? All right. So um, we're doing speaking part two now and then speaking part three after. Uh, thanks for the questions, members. Uh, welcome, Owis. Welcome, Rajveer and Preeti. Um, it's okay to just throw questions at me. So if you have a question that comes to mind and you're like, hey, wait a second, I really wanted to ask this, just put it in there. Hopefully I'll catch it. If I do, I'll answer it, okay? It does not distract me as long as it's relatively on topic, okay? So uh, just throw them out there. If you're thinking it, there's a good chance one of your classmates is also thinking it, okay? So uh, here we go, part two, cue card, okay? Um, part one, usually quite good for a lot of students these days. They practice it a lot. And it's uh, uh, some kind of a um, general topic about you in many cases, uh, your favorite uh, type of food, the clothing that you usually wear, where you work, where you study. So you go past those uh, part one uh, questions. That's where you build a lot of confidence and fluency. And then you get to your speaking part two, your cue card. What do you do first? Okay, so what do you do first once you flip the card and you see this question? So describe something you made for your, made yourself or a friend or family member. So you flip this card. The examiner says you have one minute to look at the questions, think about your answers, take notes if you wish. Your one minute begins now. You turn over the card, you see these questions. What do you do? Strategy is so important, students. It's so important here that you are on mark and you're just basically doing step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, and you're not just kind of stuck in this frozen, confused, nervous state. Okay? Yeah, so Jainil says carefully read the questions and read the uh, title statement twice. Yeah, very good, Jainil. So step one, I know we have quite a few new members these days, which is great. So I'm going to go through these steps uh, nice and uh, uh, systematically here. Okay, so step one, read the questions carefully. A lot of students just look at the questions too fast. Carefully and read the topic statement twice. Okay. Um, one of the most common mistakes is that students speak off topic. This is a really bad mistake because it not only drops your score for part two, but also negatively affects part three. Okay, so you have to make sure that you do not speak off topic. And in order to do that, you have to read this topic statement two times. Okay, two times. So be very careful. Here we go. Part two, describe something you made yourself for a friend or family member. One more time. Describe something you made, past tense yourself you made it for a friend or family member not just some person or not a teacher okay but a friend or family member right so if you start talking about what you made for your teacher in the class like a project you're going to do bad because it's not asking about a teacher and arguably a teacher unless you somehow try to explain that they're your friend uh, will be off topic okay so be very careful all right what it was how did you make it when did you make it? Who you gave it to? How did you and your friend or family feel about it? Okay, so you have to make sure that you answer all of these questions. All right. Okay, cool. So you read it uh, and the reading should only take you 10 seconds. Okay, we're, we're not looking at a lot of words here. So Rajveer says the category is item and the tense is past. Very good, Rajveer. That's your next step. Thank you, Rajveer. So step two, 
is identify grammar and category. Okay, so you identify the category. It's going to be either an object, person, place, event, or idea. It'll basically fit into one of these. And then your grammar, past, present, future, or a combination. Okay, I know that some of you have heard about this talk about the past, present, future. Uh, that's not always a good idea, okay? So remember, talking about past, present, and future is not always a good idea. And future for any question is not necessarily a good idea, uh, like in this case, okay? So if you spend a significant amount of time uh, here talking about the present and the future, there's a good chance you're going to go off topic because most of this conversation or most of this monologue, your little mini presentation, should be dealing with the past tense. This is an event uh, that happened in the past and an object that was made in the past. Okay? So here... It would not be wise to focus a lot on present or future. The examiner would kind of be inside. They won't show this to you, but they'd be scratching their head going, why are you talking about the future when the question's asking you about how they felt about it, what was the object, what did you use to make it? It's obviously mostly past tense here. Okay. So um, <clears throat> everybody clear on that past, present, future? Because I think that's a really confusing advice that a lot of students get. This PPF, past, present, future, works for some questions. Some questions, it's okay if you look at the question. But for many questions, it's not okay, all right, to have that kind of concentration. Is that clear? Okay. Carolina says, sure. That sounds like, yeah, okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> always be a critical thinker, all right? So in this case, we identify that it's an object. Okay, and when we talk about an object, um, what do we talk about? So what kind of information is generally included when communicating about an object? And Hassan, that's why I really liked your question, like are we getting um, evaluated for context? Yeah, absolutely, right? So if I tell you about an object that you have no idea about, there's kind of a few different topics that I should discuss so that you're very clear about, oh, what this object really is, okay? So Rajvir says, first of all, the appearance of the object. Yeah, what does the object look like, especially if you made this object, okay? So what it looks like. Uh, Carolina says it's function. Yeah, so what is it used for? So think about its function, okay? And what is it used for? So if you made a necklace for your friend, it's used to look pretty or look handsome, right? So it's function. Um, Carolina says it's significance. Okay, and um, before these ones, Carolina, there's one that's kind of missing here after function. Okay, so there's one that should be here. Yeah, very good. Rajvir, just uh, watch the spelling there. Or origin. Yeah, where does it come from? Now here, clearly you made it, but you still have some um, components, some materials or ingredients uh, that you're using to make it. So you still, we still want the origin, right? So the appearance, the origin, the function, and the significance, and the significance according to you. So, and this should be the order. Okay, so this really should be the order that you're talking because it makes the most sense. What does it look like? Where did it come from, the object? What is it used for, right? And why? Why? What is the purpose? So why is this object important or not important? So the significance. So if you think about this and you have this in your head, then it's going to be much faster to create the notes and to create good communication, okay? All right, 
So know these basic steps for good communication about objects, people, places, events, and ideas. If you have the right kind of topics for each one of these five categories, you will do much better in part two, okay? And for future presentations on various topics as well. Okay, cool, so that's my step two. And I figured that out and I know that it's uh, mostly past tense, okay? In this case. So what's my step three, all right? And uh, I know this is a bit of review for some of our members that have been around, but it's good review and um, uh, you're helping your fellow members who are newer to the channel as well to realize the same as what you realized before, like, aha, that's how I can put this together quickly. Okay, so Carolina says, think of two, three possible choices. Yeah, absolutely. So think of two to three uh, good possible choices for the question which are original and easy to talk about. Okay, now here's the important part, visualize. Think outside the box and be optimistic rather than pessimistic. Okay, and that's an important one, okay, especially for an exam where you've just paid like two or three hundred dollars uh, to sit the exam and it's going to have a huge impact on your life, whether or not you're going to university or uh, immigrating to another country. So um, you should never think like, uh, I've never made anything for anyone, okay, so... Okay, this should not be coming into your mind when you get this task or sorry, um, uh, part two cue card, okay? So never think in this way, oh gosh, I've never made anything for anyone. I'm doomed, okay? Uh, that's a terrible way to approach this question. Uh, and unfortunately, I see this often with students. They're like, oh, never, okay? Uh, as humans, so you should be like this, okay? Okay, so this is how you should be thinking about it, optimistically, and then visualize it. You should think, as humans, we make things for people all the time. What are they? What do I make for people? Okay. All right, so be the optimist. Is that clear, students? So the IELTS will never ask you a part two question that's an impossible question to answer, okay? They won't do that because all of the part two questions are designed for men, women, 20-year-olds, 50-year-olds, 60-year-olds. So the questions are never designed so that only one of 10 people can answer it. When the IELTS examiners are coming up with these questions, they sit down, they plan them, and they're thinking, okay, um, let's come up with a question where 99 people from 100 should easily be able to think of some ideas, okay? So if you're that person that's going, I can't think of anything, um, you're in the wrong, okay? It's not the IELTS examiners that are wrong, you are wrong, okay? Believe me, it's the way it works, all right? Carolina's like, yeah, yeah, I got it. Good, Carolina, thanks for the feedback. I love feedback, members, so talk to me, okay? I'm watching you. Um, all right, so give me some ideas. Uh, what are things that we make for friends and family uh, that you could talk about here if you're visualizing? Okay, so describe something you made yourself for a friend or family member. Yeah, Carolina, a cake for my mother's birthday. Why not? Of course, food. We often make food for friends and family. So cake for my mom's B-Day. Sure. Yeah, that's a good one, Carolina. 
All right. So Jainil says, a Ganesh statue uh, for my neighbor friend. Yeah, for my friend. Okay, don't say neighbor, Jainil. Stay with friend there. Okay, so a Ganesh. Yeah, I know Ganesh statue. The elephant head god. Uh, son of um, oh, the big god. Uh, Ganesh statue for a uh, friend. Sure, yeah, you can carve a statue for a friend. Why not? Or you can make it out of clay or other materials, plastic, whatever. Okay, paper mache. Okay, Ois says, teaching driving for my br brother. Um, you don't make that OS. That's something that you taught. So OS, you have to be careful. If you, if you started speaking about uh, teaching your brother driving, that would be off topic. Although it seems like it's correct, there you're teaching something rather than making something for someone. So be really careful, OS. That's why we read that first statement twice, okay? Okay, Puiti says, a painting of my dad for his birthday. Yeah, a painting, sure, of course, a drawing or a painting, right? Painting of my dad for his B-Day. Yeah, if you're artistic, why not? If not, you can make it up, okay? Yeah, Janiel Shiva, that's right, son of Shiva. Thank you. Uh, his Ganesh. Um, okay, what else? So what else do we make? Oh, let me put one up there because this is true, and I did this just the other day. I have to share with you a dollhouse for my daughter and it's true i was ah, oh, i was just melting all over the place and some of you have seen that kind of picture of my daughter and she's four now and just the other day i made a dollhouse for my daughter out of boxes and other materials okay um what else what else do we make so think outside the box we make lots of different uh so Preeti says, a meal for my friends to celebrate the long weekend. Very good, Preeti. Uh, P Preeti, be specific. So what kind of a meal, okay? So um, chicken vindaloo, I believe it's spelled like that, yeah. Uh, chicken vindaloo for my friends to celebrate um, the Labor Day long weekend weekend okay good yeah that's a good idea too sure all right see so now you're getting into it so you're realizing that hey uh, there are lots of different kinds of um, things that we make okay so food is one as well Ois, picking your brother up from school is still not making something uh, just winder says made a powerpoint presentation for my brother to help him manage his money. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Okay, so let me just separate these. Uh, so we have lots of good ideas. Yeah, we use computers to make uh, certain kinds of things, uh, pictures, for example, as well. Okay. So let me uh, kind of do a little bit of separation here. And then uh, we'll uh, we'll pick one of these, okay? Okay, so um, here we go. Uh, let's do these ones then, uh, and we have lots. You only need to come up with three, and obviously we've come up with a lot more. I just wanted to show you that if you're keeping an open mind, you're keeping being positive, then you can really uh, come up with a lot of great ideas, okay? And you'll eventually realize that, hey, wait a second, I did actually uh, do something. So, um, okay. Now think of an object, right? So stay away from uh, activities. So Hassan says, renovated the living room in my family home with new decorations. Hassan, yeah, if you made the decorations, then maybe, but renovating isn't really making an object. You could get stuck in a tricky situation there, Hassan. I, I know it seems like you're making an object, but you're actually renewing 
an object, which is your home. So be careful, okay? Um, Mahilohia, yeah, very good. Toys for my nephew and niece. Be specific. Like I said, dollhouse, okay? So you want to be specific, okay? Um, so uh, let's do this. So cake, let's be specific here. Um, Carolina, tell me what kind of cake. Okay, Ganesh statue, that's very nice. I think that was Jainil because it's a statue and it's a Ganesh statue, okay? Uh, painting of my dad, uh, dollhouse, uh, chicken vindaloo, okay? Being specific is important. And um, a financial PowerPoint presentation, okay? That's a virtual one. It's a little bit trickier, but it's doable. Uh, vote, so pick one of these out. Let's do one of these. So which one? Okay, um, one, two, three, four, five, or six. Just pick one. Okay. So Puiti says a cake, just the number, just the number. Vote on the number. Uh, Jainil really wants to go with the Ganesh statue. I think the Ganesh statue could be tricky to talk about, Jainil. Careful with it. Um, painting of my dad. All right, we have quite a nice split decision here. Hassan uh, says, I support your dollhouse. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, dollhouse could be quite easy to talk about. Um, Ois says, a painting of my dad uh, for his birthday. Okay. Um, you know what? Sure. Let's go with that one. And then everybody can try uh, something different after. So let's go with painting of my dad for his birthday. Okay. All right. Sure. Let's do it. So let's do number three. I saw a few votes for that. Looks like we've got a pretty good split anyway. Most of us can draw pictures, right? Uh, making a birthday card, by the way, would be another example of a common type. So let's go with painting of dad for his birthday. All right, so that's our choice. Now our next step is to write down usable notes. Okay, so first you want to think of appearance. You don't need to write this in your notes, but you want to think of appearance. Okay, so what did your painting look like? Okay, so give me some information about appearance. If you're thinking painting, let's do it. Uh, let's create some usable notes. What does this painting look like? Okay, of your dad. So Rajveer says it's colorful. I don't think you need to write that down, Rajveer. So I don't think you need to write down colorful in your notes. I think that's something that you can remember. Okay, so in to more detail. Uh, just Winder, instead of portrait size, um, give me the actual dimensions. Okay, so give me the dimensions. Maybe... Um, uh, 80 by, by 30 or 40. Okay. Okay. Always says bright colors. That's better. So Okay, now, um, okay, so Janiel, very good. So it's a picture of my father riding a horse. Yeah, very good. So, all right, very good. Wow, yeah. Um, I don't think I would ever be able to paint a picture of my father riding a horse, but sure. Okay, Janiel, very good. It's an oil painting, right? So watercolor, acrylic, oil. Okay, so it's oil on canvas. Okay, running a horse. Fun memory, sure. Okay, good. So that's the kind of usable notes that you want to write down. The size of that painting, the colors that you use, the actual colors. Um, what the painting depicts, what it shows, 
and then what you're using for that oil on canvas. Now you'll realize that the appearance here is already starting to answer some of the questions on the card. So here's where students sometimes go, yeah, but Adrian, what about the questions on the card? Well, when you're thinking about an object as appearance, origin, function, um, importance or significance, you start to answer these questions. So what it was, how did you make it? When did you make it? Who you gave it to? Okay, so these start to be covered by thinking about this. Okay, Carolina says watercolors or acrylic. Sure, those are the common types of paints that we use. Watercolor, oil, acrylic. Watercolors may be a bit easier to use than oil. Okay, good. So, um, origin. Okay. So what's the painting's origin? All right. Where does it come from? Let's, let's go a little bit quick here, students. So don't overthink it. So let's, let's, uh, kind of talk about this. You know, it's for his birthday. You're going to say that right away in the beginning, Jainil. So you don't need to say that. Where is this painting coming from? It's not made in a factory. So where was it made? Think, think about this, visualize it critically. Okay. I'll give you a little bit of a hint here. Okay, so I made it in the garage or in my bedroom, okay, or in my backyard I painted this, okay. So think about the location of where you made the painting. Very good, Rajveer. That's what I was looking for. So 12 hours. Okay. Um or in your studio, yeah, very good. If you're a painter, Pweeti, maybe you made it in your studio. Okay, it took you 12 hours. Um, or your drawing room, sure, Jainil. Okay, all right, uh, and uh, where did you get the supplies? Okay, Jainil says worked on it three hours a week. For several for a couple months absolutely Jainil that's the origin of the painting and where did the supplies come from okay art store down the street okay or Rajveer ordered it from Amazon yeah I'm sure art store down the street Amazon sells lots of art supplies yeah so those work all right, uh, now function, okay? So you gotta move quickly. Remember, you only have one minute uh, to think about all these notes and to jot some of these ideas down. So you have to move quickly, students. Um, what's the function of this painting? Okay, so we already know that it's for his 50th birthday. Aside from his 50th birthday, uh, what is the function? What's the purpose, okay? Why are you giving your father this painting aside from the fact that it's to celebrate his 50th birthday, which is obvious. You don't need to write that down because you're going to say that. Okay. Very good, Rajveer. Show affection and love. Yeah, for my father. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, Ois, very good. Nice, Ois, to remind him of this day. Okay. Very nice. Very good, Carolina. Decorate his room. Okay. See the level of fluency that you can build up when you go through these steps systematically? Is everybody getting that? So if you try to think about this question of talk about an object you made for someone, its significance, I think it's really easy to get lost and to start talking in many different directions, which becomes difficult for your listener. But if you go through it in this way, you end up with a very nice structured communication that will be very clear and that's how you'll get that high mark, right? So this is how you build that fluency. So there's your function and then the significance. 
Okay, um, so the significance, what's the importance of this painting? So uh, here you should uh, or you can uh, think about the questions on the card as well because they're going to be connected. So how did you and your fr uh, friend or family feel about it? So think about that as well, right? How did your dad feel about it? Okay, so what's the significance? Okay, so very good. Rajvir says satisfaction, a high level of satisfaction, right? Um, okay, so how did you, gr yeah, exactly, Puiti, very good. He cried, grateful. He, maybe he didn't cry, but he got teary-eyed. Okay, great. So you have more than enough, all right? Now, um, let's count this up. So just so you know, okay, because of course I'm giving you a lot of notes here, but at the end of the day, you're really only writing these down. So you have one, two, three, four. Okay, so you have 80 by 40, bright colors, riding a horse, fun memory, oil on canvas, in the studio, 12 hours, got the supplies from an art store and Amazon, show my affection and love, remind him of the positive day, decorate his room, he got teary-eyed, he was grateful, big hug, okay? I'm a hugger, big hug. Okay, um, so uh, that's all you write down. The rest of all of this that I wrote up here for you, that's all happening in your mind. That's being prepared. So you know that you're talking about an object, you know that this is what you have to discuss. You go through appearance, origin, function, significance, and you're on track. And now it doesn't matter what the question object is, you know what you're talking about, okay? Hi, Bisser, welcome into the class. Okay, cool, so this was our fourth step. And now hopefully, we still have about 10 seconds left in our one minute, okay? Time has truly slowed down for this lesson. Um, but we have about um, 10 seconds left, so now we come up with our uh, first sentence, right? So get your first sentence ready. Okay, give me some first sentences, members. So the uh, examiner says, okay, your one-minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. Before that happens, um, yeah, very good, Carolina. So... Carolina says, I clearly remember uh, when I painted my dad uh, for his 50th birthday. Okay, good. All right, that works. Rajveer, an object which I prepared a couple of months back is an oil painting for my father. Uh, for his 50th birthday. Yeah. And I like, um, Rajvir, I really like how you used the topic sentence in your answer. That's always a really good idea. So an object that I made for a loved one um, a couple of months back. is an oil painting of my father for his 50th birthday. Okay, cool. So let's uh, continue from this one and let's just keep going, okay? Let's see how fast we can put this all together. So just start giving me the next sentences, okay? So an object that I made for a loved one a couple of months back is an oil painting of my father for his 50th birthday. Uh, this uh, painting is oil on canvas, portrait orientation, about 80 by 40 centimeters in size, okay? 
keep giving me more information. Okay. Uh, Mahi Loya, that's good, but instead of saying, I would love to speak about the moment, just get more directly into it. So say an object that I made um, as a special gift uh, was an oil painting for my father's 50th birthday. The more direct you are, the better your communication, the better your band score. Okay, uh, keep going with me here, students. So give me some sentences. Okay, start putting together the notes. Very good. I used a lot of bright and happy colors, such as uh, red, yellow, blue, um, to create a really positive composition depicting my dad riding a horse. In fact, I created the painting from a real moment that was captured on film back when my father um, was on a date with my mother. This uh, day horseback riding was a or is a very special moment in their past. So I decided to paint it. Okay. I'm just making that up just like you. Okay. I'm letting my creativity and my visualization flow. Okay. Puiti says painting is oil on canvas, 80 by 40 centimeters. I made this beautiful painting in my art studio and it took me about 12 hours to achieve it. I used a lot of bright colors, red, yellow, and pink. Very nice, Puiti. Yeah, the origin doesn't have to come right after, so you can kind of intertwine and mix it in, Puiti, as you did. And I think it works good, okay? So uh, it took me about 12 hours from start to finish and I had made it in my garage uh, studio at home. Very good. All right, nicely done. Keep feeding me sentences, students, so I really like what you're doing. Just keep feeding me more and more sentences, okay? Oh, it says the motion came to mind from a movie that I watched two years ago with my father. It is a really fond memory. So take your creativity and your imagination, Ois, even one step further. If it's from a movie, then uh, that's great. Maybe it's a special movie that you and your father both enjoy watching together, like uh, Gone with the Wind. Let's go right for the gold and speak of one of the legendary movies, Gone with the Wind. Okay, sure. Okay, so let your creativity flow. And you have to be calm uh, in part two in order to do this. Okay, so be calm, confident, and be systematic. All right. Rajvir says, not only did I purchase some materials like the canvas and brushes from a local store, but are also ordered these bright colors from Amazon. Yeah, very nice use of that correlative conjunction, Rajvir. So I would do it like this, Rajvir. I both... Uh, bought some uh, art supplies from a local retailer, the canvas and brushes, and I got the uh, bright oil paints uh, through Amazon. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, Hassan says, I don't really have painting skills, but I tried to do this. So I drew my father riding a horse. 
when he was an adult. However, the picture was like my father writing a hippopotamus. <laughs> That's funny, Hassan. Um, in this case, Hassan, I would just pretend like you are a good artist. So uh, careful not to uh, derail, go kind of off topic or into, get yourself into an awkward situation trying to be humorous. Um, students have asked me that, Hassan, in the, in the past, like, is it okay to be funny in the IELTS speaking? Yes, but I don't recommend it. Humor in a foreign language is extremely difficult, okay, uh, because it's cultural as well. So I highly advise you not to go down a path of humor in your speaking. Be very, very cautious with that, okay? All right, but thanks for the smile, Hassan. Uh, visualizing my father writing hippopotamus, and I'm very visual, so it's quite funny, okay? All right, um, so I'm gonna move us along a little bit here. This is where I would check my notes, uh, check the card, make sure that I'm not going off topic, pay attention to time. So check notes and card, pay attention to time, and answer all questions, okay? When my father unwrapped this painting at his birthday party, he became very emotional and teary-eyed. He gave me a big hug and a kiss. I hope or hoped that he would hang it somewhere in the living room or bedroom to decorate his house. But to my surprise, he hung it in his office, okay? I was very pleased Um, that he was grateful and happy that I could express my love through this um, home made project. Okay, so uh, there we go. Um, let's go over this. All right. I think all of you did a fantastic uh, job with this. Uh, from the top, everyone, again, remember, this is a speaking class, so speak and repeat, okay? So an object that I made for a loved one a couple of months back is an oil painting of my father for his 50th birthday. This painting is oil on canvas, portrait orientation, about 80 by 40 centimeters in size. I used a lot of bright and happy colors, such as red, yellow, blue, to create a really positive composition depicting my dad riding a horse. In fact, I created the painting from a real moment that was captured on film back when my father was on a date with my mother. This day horseback riding is a very special moment in the past, so I decided to paint it. It took me about 12 hours from start to finish, and I had made it in my garage studio at home. I both bought some art supplies from a local retailer, the canvas and brushes, and I got the bright oil paint through Amazon. When my father unwrapped this painting at his birthday, he became very emotional and teary-eyed. He gave me a big hug and a kiss. I hoped that he would hang it somewhere in the living room or bedroom to decorate his house, but to my surprise, he hung it in his office. I was very pleased that he was grateful and happy that I could express my love through this homemade project. All right, and that would be your band nine answer, okay, with the right level of coherence, connectedness, vocabulary, okay, and that will work 
Wow. Uh, students, um, we're going to, if that was fast, don't worry. Uh, we'll go over this one more time at the beginning of next class uh, to lay the groundwork for part three speaking, which is coming up in 30 minutes. So in 30 minutes, we'll do part three speaking with, of course, some questions related uh, to this topic. So uh, good work, everyone. Work on fluency, work on speed as well. But importantly, uh, remember structure here. So communication and structure, okay? So hopefully I'll see all of you in 30 minutes for the continuation of this class. You're very welcome, Hassan. You're very welcome, Ois. And again, in half an hour, part three coming up. I'm Adrian signing out from Budapest for now. Do remember to visit our websites and use our premium packages at aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gltshelp.com for general. Bye for now. See you soon.